You know, subhanallah, we have such a blessed gift of Allah. Such a blessed gift known as sickness. Did you ever know that sickness is a gift? It's one of the few things that instantly draws you close to Allah. Instantly. You have no option, especially when medicine has given up. Then you realize I need to develop a link with my maker. That's a gift of Allah. If that is what caused you to earn paradise, trust me, it was the best thing that could have happened to you. May Allah grant us cure. Some people never read Salah, never ever. The day they cannot move anymore, they want to read Salah while sitting. Alhamdulillah, beautiful. At least now you're reading Salah, even though you're now sitting. Subhanallah, even though you're now sitting, but at least you're reading Salah. It's a gift of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches you. He sees you're ill. He sees you're sick. That's a gift of Allah. He knows he made you that way because he loves you. Subhanallah. He made you that way because he loves you. And this is why the hadith says, in Allah, إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا إِبْتَلَهُ When Allah loves a worshiper, He tests him. He gives him more tests. So Allah tests you. Allah will test you. Then you start crying to Allah helplessly. And then you turn to Allah. And obviously there are two things that can happen. When you are sick and ill, shaitan can get hold of you. Or spirituality can get hold of you. Religiousness can get hold of you. So you need to be careful. It's like treading a tightrope. You know, you will have someone who looks like a religious person and he tells you, Hey, I can cure you. So you say, okay, cure is in the hands of Allah. That's obviously the, but let's see what you have to say. So if they are giving you, for example, some herbal medication, or they are giving you zamzam, or they're giving you honey. And uh, for example, the black seed and these things that are beneficial, various other items, or they give you a diet to tell you, you know what, uh, try and uh, abstain from this type of food and try and eat this type. It's high in mineral and vitamin and so on. Alhamdulillah, we understand it. But the minute they tell you, listen, stand on your left foot for three minutes and start looking up in the sky and hold five leaves on the right hand. And, and then you put, tell someone to put a piece of lemon into your mouth and do that five times a day. You need to know that is shaitan, complete shaitan. Allah is going to ask you. That is the devil. Wallahi. You need to know this. Where did they come from? This is nothing that makes sense. It's not medication. It's not herbal medication. This is superstition. This is the devil. No matter what the person who gave you this looks like, it's wrong. You need to have common logical sense that this is unacceptable. This is Allah. He's going to ask you about this gift. So at the same time, like I said, your heart becomes softened. And you turn to Allah, so now we cry. So our salah, we don't miss. Isn't it? Because why? We have a problem. And then what happens when you have a major issue? Subhanallah. You get up a little bit earlier than Salatul Fajr for another salah known as Tahajjud. Isn't it? We are up very early. And you say, sister. Or if your husband says, hey wifey, why are you up so early? You know I have a problem. Subhanallah. So that's why I'm up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I'm up very early and we cry to Allah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very, very beautifully clear where he says in Surah Fussilat, verse number 51. When we have blessed man with all the gifts, he turns away, he forgets us. You have nothing missing in your life, absolutely nothing. Your health is okay, your wealth is okay, your children are okay, your work is okay, your, your salary is okay, uh, your, your situation is okay, everything is beautiful, you're enjoying eating out every other day, you have a holiday. You know, everywhere you want to go, you've gone and so on and you still keep on going and everything is growing. And what's the point of knowing Allah? A lot of people would say, what's the point of knowing? Allah? That is the time you're supposed to get closer to Allah. The winner is the one who has the dunya and the akhirah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains to us this dua, beautiful dua. Oh Allah, grant us that which is goodness in this world and goodness in the next and safeguard us from the punishment of the fire. So that is the beauty. You want goodness here and there. That is obviously not everyone will get this, but that is the ultimate gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have subhanallah, 
an issue and that is quite normal to have issues problems difficulties learn to turn to Allah and Allah alone it is when things go wrong that people begin to make supplications long dua prolonged subhanallah you know if you see if you see a man walking in the masjid and he sits in the masjid subhanallah and he asks Allah and you find him after salah he is sitting there after salatul asr and he's you know he's raising his hands or he's crying to Allah and you find when you go for salatul maghrib he's sitting in the same place he is sitting in the same place He is sitting in the same place and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think? You think this man's got a big problem. He's sitting in exactly the same spot and he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the description in Surah Fussilat, the verse that I read, where Allah says, when we have bestowed upon man, when we have given him, he turns away. He turns away on his side. And when evil befalls him, he makes prolonged prayer, prolonged prayer. Now you tell me spiritually, which is a better condition? Is it better to turn away or is it better to be engaged in prolonged prayer? So what is the gift of Allah here for us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. You know, I always used to think when I was young that why is it that only old people become sick and invalid? You know, when you're old, you become a little bit, you know, you find it a little bit more difficult to walk. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those who are sick and ill. Amen. So one might ask, what are the benefits of Tawbah? Do you know that the benefits of Tawbah, one of them is that you will be granted sustenance. The wealth that we want so much. If we engage in istighfar and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give it to us or He will give us barakah in the wealth. Listen to what Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam told his people in another place in the Quran. Rabbakum. This is in Surah Nuh. Innahu kana ghaffara. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam told his people engage in istighfar, engage in tawbah and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. He will send the rain as a result of your repentance. So when we want rain, we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Then the rain will come. And over and above that, He will grant you lots of wealth and He will grant you offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And then He says on top of that, He will grant us Jannah in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us as well. Don't relate this good news to your brothers because they might plan and plot against you they might become jealous of you what do we learn from this those were the children of a nabi and something good he told his son don't tell the others when something good happens to us we don't even have to tell our family members sometime until we've achieved something sometimes we're planning to go somewhere who says that you have to inform everyone no it depends on how important that journey is you don't have to always inform everyone of your next move. You don't have to tell them about your business deals. You don't have to tell them about anything. You should seek assistance in fulfilling your needs by being secretive to a certain extent. You don't have to tell everyone everything because shaitan is bad. They might be good. Shaitan is an outright clear enemy against man. So even if a person does not want to be jealous, you find that sometimes Shaitan puts in a spear, an arrow, in interferes and makes a person jealous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us jealous. When a person has a child, for example, a little baby, for those who are newly married who have children, alhamdulillah, if the baby sleeps all night, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know what, that baby, mashallah, sleeps all night. From that night on, the baby might not sleep because Ain and the evil eye might attack that baby. You can say, look, that's a normal child. You know, they sleep. You know how children sleep. So you haven't lied. Alhamdulillah. At the same time, when, it, when something good happens, you don't have to tell everyone. And if you tell them, make sure they say, mashallah, in front of you, don't be shy to say, say mashallah. He was thrown into this pit. And they picked him up. When they picked him up, what does Allah say? They regarded him as merchandise. And they said, no, this will make money out of this. 
You know, sometimes when we pick up lost property, what do we do? Very valuable. You pick up a blank check. It tells you a million rands. What do you do? Very tempting. May Allah grant us Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can hand it back. You know what happens sometimes like what we read in the newspapers in countries like these, you find you hand back a large amount of money to the cop shop, to the policeman. Sometimes it disappears from there. But don't worry, so long as you didn't steal it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So the same applies here. These people, what do we learn from them? They looked at an innocent boy, a very handsome man. They said, no, we'll make money out of this. Come bring him into this. They sold him at the next market. Someone bought him a very wealthy man bought him. And in a nutshell, what had happened? The wife of this minister of Egypt had an evil intention. When she saw this handsome man, handsome Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, she says, you know what? He's a worker for us. He works for us. Let me advance sexually. How many of us are guilty of making sexual advances at the workplace? Let's be honest. This lesson comes from Surah Yusuf. Whether it is male or female is besides the point. The lesson is don't ever make sexual advances that are haram, especially at the workplace. If someone is working for you and don't think that this person here is actually under me. So let me try my luck. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Look at the example. Who would have guessed that we learned this from it? That whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed. In that case, it will result in destruction of one way or another. Let me give you an example. Sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn, you might bump the car in front of you. It can happen. Why? It's similar to cutting the hand. It will cause bodily harm, material harm. It will cause lots of harm. It's a fact. Sometimes if you engage in an act, you might end up with a huge disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path, there is destruction coming your way. Do you know that we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you have wealth, a salary at the end of the month or wealth, and there is no barakah in it, no barakah at all. Ask yourself, you probably engaged in a sin. You're probably oiling some of your bad habits. Maybe casino, maybe gambling, maybe drinking, maybe nightclubs, maybe drugs, maybe a woman, maybe someone of the opposite sex. You need to pay money. You need to look after someone more than what Allah has shouldered upon you. How can there be barakah in your wealth? So if you find your money is running away quickly, leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month. You'll still have 450 inshallah. May Allah grant us barakah in Imagine, our wealth. The hadith says, Allah will grant the shade of his arsh on the day of Qiyamah to a man whom when a lady who is very good looking and wealthy and well to do who has a high status in society calls him towards sin and she says look he says look I fear Allah Allah says on the day of Qiyamah I will call him out by name everyone will be wondering what is this man called out for by name Allahu Akbar Allah says come come this day of heat you will be under the air conditioning system, Allahu Akbar, under the shade of my own arsh. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant it. This is the interpretation of the dream that I had in the very beginning of the sun, the moon and the 11 stars. So the sun was depicting the father of the house. The moon was depicting the mother of the house. And we've got to listen to this carefully. And the stars were depicting the 11 children. If you take a look at the qualities of the sun, strong powerful it shines everyone feels secure in the presence of the sun we go out we work we earn sustenance we come back we feel so secure that is those are the qualities of the sun every father in every home needs to have the qualities that the sun outside has he needs to present give the warmth in the house the sense of security bring in the sustenance make everyone feel secure and make them feel well don't we feel so good when the sun is out we run around Without any fear, Alhamdulillah. Those are the qualities that Allah has kept in the sun. They are supposed to be in every successful father of every home. The moon, beautiful, you can look at it. MashaAllah, you can admire it. The moon, the light of the moon is solely derived from the sun. Do we know that? The, sh the brighter the sun, the more you see of the moon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the example of the moon, the example of the successful mother in the house. The stars who are the children, you don't see them during the daylight. If you look at the sun, you won't be able to see it directly. You will probably need some glasses. That is the respect of the father in the house. Not to say we shouldn't look at him, but we respect him. But when the moon is out, the stars are twinkling, mashallah. It shows the closeness of relation between the children and the mother. Alhamdulillah. Let's try and understand this example. It's a very deep example. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us successful mothers, amazingly, they should be having the qualities of the moon. Can I give you one more jewel that we extract? The moon goes through a 28 day cycle precisely. Some days it's not there. Some days it's there. The same applies to a woman. She goes through a 28 day cycle. Some days she is there. Some days she is not there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding. Wallahi, when Allah gives an example, it is a perfect example that fits. And if we think that it is not a perfect example, we need to revisit our intellect because the creator cannot make a mistake. The stars, Alhamdulillah, we've seen. Now let me tell you, and we want to end with this. Inshallah, I might mention one verse of Surah Al-Ra'd, seeing that I've taken a little bit more time because it's an interesting surah today. Very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us yet another example. When we mix the roles, when father wants to play role of mother and mother wants to play role of father, what happens? There is chaos and confusion. They are fighting. The children lose the most. Don't we agree? The children suffer the most because these two have now confused their roles. So when the sun goes into the place of the moon, the moon goes into the place of the sun. We have an eclipse where you can see neither of them. Amazing. And what happens? The stars are nowhere to be seen when there is an eclipse. The same way when we mix up our roles that Allah has given us, we have what is known as a social eclipse, chaos in the house. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that sign of Qiyamah. In the same way that an eclipse is a sign of Qiyamah, we are supposed to be engaging in Salah and Istighfar and Tawbah when the eclipse is there outside, when there is a social eclipse in the house, that is also a sign of Qiyamah. We need to be engaging in Istighfar and Tawbah and Salah until the condition returns to normal. That is Surah Yusuf.